Namaste everyone. Um, so I thought I'd start a few minutes early just so you can get yourself settled and uh, we can just bring ourselves into practice together. Uh, also gives everybody a bit of time to organise their technology. Uh, this is the first time I've done this so I hope this works. It seemed to work earlier when we did a test um, and finding a suitable space was also interesting. So uh, we've created a little space in our study here this evening. Um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to practice tomorrow at 12 o'clock as well, midday, um, for our usual midday Friday session, uh, hopefully. So we'll see if, if uh, feedback works for this. So um, it would be great if um, people can join in along with us. Um, I can, I think, manage to uh, invite people potentially um, if they want to come in. So uh, I, I've made it public so I hope everyone can see um, and uh, you can get yourself uh, settled on your mat. Obviously, uh, as we normally start, um, we're just going to take some gentle back openers. So uh, if you're ready, you can bring yourself onto your mats and lie on your backs with your legs bent and just settle um, and listen into yourself. So then, we're just lying ourselves down, carefully does it, listening to our backs and our bodies and just relaxing on the floor. Lift up the head and stretch through the top of the head. Just open up the arms and lift and lower each of them just to get the shoulders nicely settled on the floor and then just push through the feet, lift up the pelvis and just lengthen the lower back. And just tuck the chin in gently and see if you can just settle for a moment. So just a few minutes while we're waiting here, just settling in our relaxed pose. Tuning in to how we're feeling, the level of anxiety. Obviously at the moment things are a little bit weird. If you prefer, you can bring your hands onto your belly and just start to bring yourself into three-stage breathing. So breathing into the hands and bringing the breath all the way up to the top of the lungs and then following that breath pattern. Nothing forced, just following the length of the breath in and the length of the breath out. So settle yourself there while I just bring ourselves uh, and welcome other people into practice. So namaste everybody, nice to see you. We'll give this a try, see if it works. Hopefully you can at least see me if you can't hear me. Hopefully you can hear me if you can't see me very well uh, and somehow uh, this will work. So um, roughly 60 minute practice if we can. Um, see how that see how that goes. It's a very different space. Obviously, it's a very different experience to class. I can't see you. I can't feel the energy in the room. I can't see your faces. Um, and home practice is very different from a class environment. So don't expect too much of yourselves and just um, have a go. The usual health warnings apply. So if you're not feeling very well, frankly, you know, in this environment, perhaps you should be resting. So maybe practice isn't for you tonight. However, if you are feeling good, then obviously we've got to work within our usual parameters. So, you know, being mindful of our range of movement, um, the amount of stretch that we can go into and being careful of our alignment of our joints. So just thinking about that and depending how warm or cold your space is, working with that as well. So thinking about how you're going to move carefully tonight. And if you need to rest at any point, then just rest. If you need to settle, that's fine too. If you need to miss anything out, it's your practice, not a problem. So we will bring ourselves then into practice um, and bring ourselves slowly up to standing. So when you're ready, you can, from your lying position, you can turn onto your right hand side and carefully bring yourselves up via your knees. That's the safest way to do it. If you're feeling more energetic, then bring yourself up. 
Now, I've left the camera deliberately so you can see my feet because I think that's more important and I'll talk you through what I'm doing with my hands. So we're going to come to the front of the mat and we're just going to take some arm stretches. So we're going to find ourselves in Samastihiti, opening up our toes and really sort of finding all four corners of our feet, pushing down into the floor and really using the gravity of the poses, lifting up nice and tall, lengthening the spine and tucking the chin in lightly. And then just roll each shoulder round a few times, backwards and then forwards. You can swim the arms if you prefer and just open up the shoulder joints so you're sort of cycling the arms. Carefully does it then. We're going to bring the hands to Namaste, lift the heart and stretch up through the top of the head. And then just take three focus breaths here. So again, tucking in the bandas. And if you are new to yoga, banda locks are your pelvic floor, mula banda, and tucking in your tummy, just lightly, udhyana banda. And then this provides a nice focus for the practice and also helps support the lower back. Breathing here, settling, tuning into how you're feeling now. Now you're upright. So we'll take just some gentle stretches here. We're just going to open up the arms into a U-shaped pattern. Now I realize you probably can't see my arms, which is really unhelpful. So our arms are out to the side with the arms bent. And we're just going to roll the shoulders back and drop the elbows down the back. And just open up the chest, draw the shoulder blades together. Stretch the arms up to the ceiling, lengthen, keep nice and tall through the spine and breathe out, draw the arms back down. I'm just gonna see if I'm gonna move the camera back a little bit so you'll be able to see me a little bit better. That might be better. There we go. <laughs> it's all trial and error, this. <laughs> okay, so that's a bit better. Okay, so then, if you're feeling happy, we can go into our sun salutations. Again, keeping the knees soft. You don't have to go down to the floor. Um, you don't have to go to the full stretch. So take a deep breath in, stretch up, lengthen. Breathe out, stretch the arms to the side, stretch forward and breathe down to the floor or to your shins if you prefer. Soften the knees, lengthen, draw the shoulder blades down the back and stretch through the top of the head. Then breathing out, balancing yourself carefully, tented hands or flat hands, stride the right leg back into that Anjani Asana lunge. So soften the back knee slightly, draw the shoulders back, knee above the ankle, nicely aligned, and just stretch through the top of the head. And start to then just bring some awareness into that back leg, drawing the heel away, pushing that away, and drawing the energy up the front of the leg into the pelvis. Take a deep breath in, look up to get your nose out of the way, tent the hands and bring the right leg back in. Stretch forward into that forward fold again and breathe out down and then stride left. So repeating the Anjana Asana on the other side, softening the knee to start with, finding the alignment in that front knee and stretching away, lengthening. Then starting to bring that engagement into the back leg, pushing through the heel and drawing the leg up banders in. Excellent. Lower that back knee down and flatten the back foot and then carefully bring those knees back together. So open up the hands, really flatten those paws, roll the shoulders back, draw the shoulder blades down and in as you push the floor away, maybe pushing through the heels of the hands into your low plank. And then carefully drawing the shoulder blades away, bending the elbows, breathing out, lowering carefully to the floor. Deep breath in, lengthen. And again, we're talking at length here. It's not about the height. So keep the back nice and long. Doesn't matter how high you go. Suck those banders in and breathe out, fold. And then push yourself back through your knees into your swan stretch. If you want to go at this a couple of times, this is the first time moving into this pose, then obviously careful with those knees if you're on a hard floor and then push through into the swan stretch. Open up the arms wide, open up the palms, draw the arms back into the body, and you can rest the head down on the floor if you prefer. Again, if your bottom doesn't get to your heels, that's fine. Keep breathing here. Band is lightly engaged.
Lovely. Carefully coming up back through the knees. Realign the hands with the shoulder heads. Roll the shoulders back and down and tuck the toes under. So moving through to down dog. Important to get the front end right. So if this is your first down dog, then that's fine. OK, so tuck the toes under. Push those feet forward a little bit. Push the hands into the floor. Roll the shoulders down and away and lengthen through the back. So it's important here, this is not an easy pose when you first start yoga. Softening the knees and keeping the heels high is a start. Just focus on lengthening the spine away and out of the shoulders and try not to hang down or out of the shoulder joints. Deep breath in, look up, stride left this time, however you can move your leg forward. Stride right, stretch forward, lengthen and breathe out, fold. And again, if you don't get to the floor, it doesn't matter. Soft knees is also good to protect the lower back. You can just stretch away with your hands on your knees or your shins or your ankles. Breathe out, fold. Soften those knees. Deliberately push the floor away as you suck the energy up the legs, stretching all the way up, lengthening the front of the body. Star the hands and breathe out. Hands to namaste. Lovely. So if you haven't done those cycles before, we're going to do those again. Take a deep breath in, sweep up and breathe out, fold. Breathe in, extend and breathe out, fold. Balance yourself and carefully draw the left leg in as you stride back. Place the hands, stride the right leg back to Chaturanga to Up Dog or knees to the floor, carefully roll the shoulders away, reverse press up down to the floor and then lengthen the front of the body. Suck those banders in to support the lower back, but again it's about length not height. Breathe out lower, tuck through the knees and the toes, push back via your swan stretch if it's easier or come straight up into your down dog. If you need to build your dog, then build it from the front, tuck the toes under and lift your bottom to the ceiling. Make like a pyramid and draw those shoulder blades down the back and start to suck the energy up the legs into the tummy. So we don't force the heels down in early down dogs and we certainly don't straighten the knees. We don't lock out the knees. Breathing here. And then take a deep breath in, look up, stride the right leg forward this time, however you can move it forward. Bring the left leg next to it, stretch away and breathe out, fold. Softening those knees if you need to, fold the arms here if you prefer and just hang out of the pelvis. Keep the activity in the banders, keep pushing the floor away and keep lifting the tail. Let the head go if you can and then soften it off, take a deep breath in, push the floor away. Float yourself back up, stretch up and breathe out. Excellent. So one more time here. Take a deep breath in, sweep up and breathe out, fold. Softening the knees as you go if you need to, either to the shins or to the floor. Breathe in, extend and breathe out, fold. Stride right, stride left to knees, to floor, or to your chaturanga, to your up dog, however you prefer. And then carefully push through your swan stretch if you need to, or then go straight up, hinging, using the banders into your down dog. Settle your proportions, just take a check in, softening the knees, lifting the legs into the pelvis, and a nice long back. Breathing here and settling. If you need to rest, Bring yourself down onto your knees, not a problem. Lovely deep breath in, pick the left leg up, stride it forwards and then look up and stride the right leg forwards. Extend and breathe out, fold. Carefully does it, folding yourself down, softening the joints off, your most vulnerable bits. And then push the floor away, bend the knees, float yourself up stretching up and breathing out. So let's take just one more of these then. So taking a deep breath in, nice warming up sessions here. Breathe out, fold. Again, doesn't have to be all the way to the floor, just keep the back nice and long. 
Breathe in, extend wherever you are. Breathe out, fold. Stride left, stride right. Either knees down to the floor, carefully does it, roll those shoulders and push the hands into the floor as you lower. Or chaturanga to up dog, breathing in. And then lowering down, breathing out. Tuck through, through your swan stretch, through your knees if you need to, hinging up to your down dog and just settle. Option here, rather than just letting the pose develop and creating stillness, you can, if you want, roll the shoulders away and start to just gently walk the dog. So you would just carefully lift and lower each heel, just slightly cycling the legs. And again, just being careful not to lock out the knees, but drawing the energy up the legs as you're pushing down through the heel very lightly, but draw the energy back into the pelvis. Breathing here. Just warming up the calves. And then coming to stillness. Taking a deep breath in, looking up, bringing your right leg through, and then your left, stretching away, staying here if this is enough, or breathing out, folding down. Soften those knees off, push the floor away, suck the banders in as you bring yourself up, stretch up, and breathe out. Lovely. So we've warmed ourselves up now. We're gonna take a little twist just to um, wake up the banders a little bit more and particularly the legs. So we're just gonna move back a little bit for this one, maybe so you can see it a bit better. So we're just gonna bring the feet together um, and bring the knees together. If that is too much for you, you can take this a little bit wider. You could stick uh, maybe a sofa cushion between your knees if you've got one of those handy or uh, a brick or a block or even a blanket potentially. The blanket might be a little bit too sort of movable, but see how you go. Feet together if you are, knees together, or pressing into the prop. Taking a deep breath in, sweeping up, stretching up and lengthening the front of the body. Draw the banders in, draw the energy up the legs. And breathe out, draw the hands to namaste. Lift the heart to meet the thumbs, draw the shoulders down the back, stretch through the top of the head as you start to sit down. So you sit down towards a sort of medium to low chair and obviously then the bottom starts to flare out the back. So we carefully just draw the tail in lightly and keep the back nice and long. It's almost like we're concertinaing the energy between the shoulder blades and the pelvis. Keep breathing here. It's not easy. Fierce pose, Utkatasana. And then very gently, and the challenge here is to keep the knees level, as you know, if you're a regular in my class, I'll keep going on about it. So we're going to carefully bring either the left hand to the outside of the right knee and roll the right shoulder open. Keep the back nice and long here as you stretch away. If you've got a variation you prefer, then you can drop down to uh, a lower version. So going to a twist across the knee, draw that left hip back to draw the left knee back if you're turning to the right. Or if you're very warm already, you could bring yourself down to the floor and keep drawing that left knee back. Keep breathing here. I'm just checking uh, who's watching. Hello. <laughs> so keep drawing your energy into your pose, drawing the energy into the banders and taking your energy from the floor. Keep breathing here. When you're ready, the dismount, keep the back nice and long as you exit the twist wherever you were. Bring yourself back up to straight, stretch yourself out to realign the pelvis, realign the spine, stretching up. And then breathing out, draw the energy back down into the namaste hands, lift the heart, drop the shoulders down the back, lengthen through the top of the head. As you then start to sit back down onto that low chair to go onto the other side. So keep well anchored through four corners of the feet, curl the tail under, tuck the pelvic floor and the tummy in to support, and then carefully does it, deep breath in, and breathe out either right hand outside of left knee, roll the left shoulder open and keep the back nice and long, draw the right hip back slightly if you feel the right knee is flying forwards, and then potentially you could go a little bit deeper. So you could bring your right elbow across your left knee, 
push into the hands and lengthen through the top of the head as you twist and again just draw back through that right hip. Breathing here, band is working, or again a bit deeper if you want to go down to the floor and draw in. As long as you feel like you're squaring up the pose, that is the pose achieved. Keep breathing here. Well done everyone, that's really good. So carefully does it again with the dismount. We need to keep the back nice and long as you release out of the twist. Bring yourself all the way back up to the stretch up and breathe out. Namaste. So we're going to go down to our hands and knees now. So if you want to use your cushion, you can as long as it's not too bulky or you can use a blanket or a towel or something you've got to hand that's going to be nice to kneel on. So take a deep breath in, stretch up, breathe out, fold, soften those knees off to release the back if you need to, stretch away where you're comfortable, that might be hands to legs or hands to floor and breathe out, fold, place and stride right lower the knee down then just bring the left knee back in so grab your prop if you need to if you're on a nice shag pile carpet you won't need any of these props i'm just going to bring your uh, knees onto a comfortable position they're going to be right underneath the hip joint nice line here nice alignment through the leg and then we're going to align the uh, upper body as well so we're going to bring the wrists elbows and shoulder heads nicely in line so definitely the head of the shoulder not the inside of the shoulder fan open your cat paws here and draw the energy down the shoulders towards the mid back tuck the bandas in mula banda pelvic floor udiana banda tummy and stretch through the top of the head this pose is quite enough sometimes you feel that you just want to draw the energy into the center of the body heats up a little bit and just levels up the back. Several options here. So for those of you who come to yoga regularly, you'll know these variations very well. So as first off, we'll be looking at the cat-cow flexion. So dropping the belly, drawing the shoulder blades down towards the bottom and possibly stretching up through the top of the head and lengthening the front of the body. And then breathing out, changing that to the extension of the spine, pushing into the floor, hands and knees, and lengthening, trying not to rock forward and backwards and just arching and opening the back. Changing back to the flexion, drawing the shoulders down the spine, dropping the belly, sticking the tail in the air and then possibly le le uh, excuse me, lifting up through the head. And then breathing out, curling down, opening the back up, leveling off and stretching up the other way, angry cat. If you're happy, you can continue those following the breath pattern, taking a nice, long, even inhalation and a nice, deep exhalation. If you want to take it up a level, you can take it into striking tiger pose. So you can drop your weight into your left knee, draw the right knee into the body to engage the psoas and suck the belly in and band is working, stretching out the back door. So we're not necessarily going for height here, we're going for length and then carefully balancing off with the banders, we're going to stretch the left arm forwards. Holding here, this is quite enough and you could take arm and leg on their own if you prefer, if balance is an issue for you and you're building your core strength and strengthen your lower back. Keep breathing. You can star the hand if you want to, feel the energy zipping up and down the limbs and then potentially you could take fists of fire if you want to take it up a level. So some of you like this one, deep breath in and breathe out and breathing in, lengthening and breathing out. It is obviously a balance so work carefully and just work through the movements pushing the breath out and drawing the breath in. Take at least three to five on each side and then when you're ready you can balance off. If you need to come off the wrists at any point you can just stretch away or sometimes you can take some of these poses with your hands in fists. So sometimes that helps just take the weight out of the wrists but just work carefully. So taking it on the other side, if you're still working your cat-cow flexions, feel free to rest out. And then carefully, we're going to drop our weight into our right knee and strike back through the left leg. So drawing the energy into the belly, sucking the banders in as you then stretch away and then draw the leg back into the pelvis. Going for length 
and then as a balance, bringing the right arm forward and draw the energy back up the arm into the shoulder. This might be enough for you, it's quite a challenge, holding here, quite strong, don't forget to breathe. And then when you're ready, if you're going up a level, you can take your fists of fire. So pushing, really push the breath out. Let the breath come back in naturally. Push it out and let the breath come back in naturally. And take a few of these, as many as you feel able to. Three to five is ideal, a few more if you feel comfortable. And then when you're ready, you can sit back and rest out. If kneeling isn't comfortable for you, then just work carefully. You can go to a high kneel if you prefer, or you can move into a seated position if you'd like to. We're just gonna take a little variation here. So if you've got the time and you want to follow along, we're just gonna bring ourselves back into that beautifully aligned um, cat cow position, draw the shoulders down the back and stretch away. If you want to for extra stability, if you know that um, you're not the strongest through your pelvis, uh, sorry, your core and your back, you might wanna bring the hands a little bit wider. It's up to you. I'm gonna bring the knees together and then carefully draw the energy into the banders. Take the weight through the hands as you suck in the belly and carefully lower the hips over to one side. This is quite strong on the lower back, so work carefully. The range of movement that you achieve, just go slowly to start with and explore opening the sacrum. Carefully does it. And then bringing yourself back up and breathing out so far so good if you're a regular you will know these are all standard stuff that we do fairly regularly in class draw the energy up into the banders to help bring those really heavy bones back up to the center and when you need to at any point you can rest out and then carefully does it from here. We're going to come back up to standing and take some of our wide-legged uh, work. So you can either just bring yourself up to standing from this pose, or you can carefully uh, bring yourself up into your down dog, being careful of whatever prop you've used. If there's something in the way, just push it out of the way. Take a deep breath in, and you can stride, step, hop, or spring forward, extend, and breathe out, fold. Carefully soften the knees off, push the floor away as you float yourself all the way back up, bringing everything back into normal alignment and breathe out. Excellent. So hopefully everyone's feeling okay and a bit warmer now and a bit more limber, maybe a bit taller than when you first started. So coming back to the front of your mats, we're going to just bring ourselves forward, bring the feet together, find ourselves back in our standard Samastiti pose. So opening up the toes, finding the four corners of the feet again, pushing the floor away, lengthening up out of the front of the pelvis, stretching up, stacking the spine, dropping the shoulders. Take a deep breath in. We're going to drop our weight to our left foot, push the floor away as we draw the right knee up at the front, as if we're going to sprint forward, and then we're going to actually strike back through that right leg. Carefully does it then. We're going to spin that leg to be parallel. So the foot at the back is now parallel with the back of the mat, and the front leg is going to be bent. Ideally, the knee above the ankle, so in a nice right angle, or just behind if that's better for you. Taking deep breath in here, we're going to open up and roll open the thighs. So you feel the front of the pelvis kind of opening up like a book or an oyster sometimes is a nicer analogy. Taking a deep breath in, going to stretch the right arm up and over, channel your inner Kate Bush here, star the hand and bring yourself up and over. You can carefully rest on the thigh. Checking that knee doesn't fly past the ankle, just caterpillar that foot forward if you need to. And the pose here is just really lengthening from the tip of that little toe of the right foot behind, all the way up the side of the body and out to that middle finger. Keep breathing here, aiming to be as flat as possible through the back of the body, drawing the energy up the legs into the banders. If you're going lower, then you can go lower. Carefully does it though, it's a long way back up and stretching over and away, finding the alignment that works for you and not overdoing uh, any of these poses. So maybe working to about 80% of effort. Deep breath here. 
then carefully does it. If you're protecting your back and your knees, now's the time to bring yourself back up. So draw that right arm back up and bring yourself back up. If you want to stay down, you can stay down and just bring yourself up lightly. And we're going to straighten everyone now, the front leg. Bring yourself back up to upright if you prefer. Open up to the front. Open up the arms and stretch away. You might have to draw the shoulders down the back and stretch away. And this time we're going to kick the right hip out for our Trikonasana pose. Keep drawing the energy up that front leg as you kick that right hip away, stretching away, resting the arm down where it's comfortable. And you can either rest the back arm on the lower back and roll the shoulder open and stretch. Keep the back nice and long. Or if you're stretching and working down towards the floor, you can then obviously go into the fuller pose. So stretching away into your Trikonasana. Being careful though, keeping the knees soft, it's really helpful to do that just because you need to protect those vulnerable joints, but drawing the energy into the muscles and creating that uh, balance between ease and effort, which is where the yoga is. Take a deep breath in, soften that front knee off, bring yourself back up and carefully and either stride that leg forward with purpose or inch that leg forward to the front of the mat. Bring yourself back together and just take a moment, take a breath, bring yourself back into Samastiti, tuck the chin in and be nice and tall. Keep breathing here and then when you're ready we're going to pick up the left leg. So we're going to drop the weight into the right foot, push the floor away, draw the energy up the left leg, bring the left knee up a little bit and strike back through the left leg. So obviously now I'm going to be facing backwards to you. So we're going to bend that front knee over the ankle, bring that back foot parallel with the back of the mat, roll the inner thighs out to open the front of the pelvis, just check that alignment, and then carefully sweeping the left arm up, star the hand, channel your weathering heights, and stretch up, up and away, lengthening from the little toe up through the middle finger. Lying against that flat wall if you can, effectively behind you, resting here, or if you're very confident, push the floor away, draw the energy into the bandas as you carefully bring yourself down a bit further. So you might need to caterpillar that foot forward, stretching away, keep breathing here. Keep drawing the energy into the bandas and then you've got your options. So you could go into your Trikonasana from low down if you prefer. If not, um, push the floor away, draw the energy back into that back arm, bring yourself back up, straighten that front leg, draw the energy into the belly, tucking in those bandas and then sweep the arms wide, draw the shoulders down the back, lift the chest and breathe out. You can cycle yourself down. If you prefer, you can keep this arm low on the lower back. Just roll the top shoulder open and lengthen through the top of the head, just inching out that left hip backwards to go into the pose or with the big arm at the top into more of a traditional pose taking care that you're not hyperextending the knee joints in this one. That can sometimes happen if you're very keen. Keep breathing. And then when you're ready, carefully bring yourself back up. Draw the energy into that top arm, top elbow. Soften the front knee off if you need to. Bring yourself back up. And then carefully looking forward, think about bringing that leg forward. If you need to take a break halfway through, then do bring yourself forward. Excellent. Bring yourself back into Samastihiti. Take a settle here. Keep breathing. Tuck the chin in, draw through the top of the head as if you've got a marionette string attached to the top of your head, being nice and tall and tucking the banders in. Breathing here. Settling, just tuning in to the various vibrations that you're getting back from your body. Lovely. So we're going to take a stride back again with the right leg this time, going into the Prasarita series. So this is the wide leg forward fold series. So some of you will know this. Carefully draw that energy into the left foot as you push the floor away, um, really using the sort of physics of the pose, drawing the energy up into the bandas as you draw the right leg up, stride back across the mat. But this time we're going to have our feet parallel. Now, 
This is usually a bit of a tricky one because we're very keen to go as wide as possible when we first get into this pose. You will know if it's too wide, you will start to feel tension creeping into the top of the thighs here. So don't be afraid, bring yourself in a little bit if you need to. And there is no need to go down to the floor. We don't have to do that. We can just soften the knees off and just work with hands on the legs if we need to. So carefully does it then, find where you're going to be happiest. If you're very um, accomplished at this pose, um, I've practiced it a lot, you may want to go slightly pigeon toed and tuck the toes in. Keep that softness in the knees though, and we're gonna push the floor away, stack the spine over the pelvis. Take a deep breath in and sweep the arms up. If your lower back is slightly tricky, you may wanna bring the arms down to take the load out of the lower back and just keep the arms low but we're keeping the spine long, we're pushing the floor away, drawing the energy into the banders here as we hinge through the pelvis. So either hands into namaste or hands high, keep breathing, breathing in and then breathing out. Kick the tail out, keep pushing evenly through four corners of the feet, soften the knees if you need to and hinge to halfway. Stretch away. If you can drop the fingers to the floor for balance, that's fine. Draw the shoulders down the back. Keep the weight in the heels and the toes and lengthen away. Keep breathing here. Trying to not lock out the knees. And then breathing out. If you need to soften off and you're going down, great. Otherwise, you can stay in that position. Or breathe out, fold, and walk the hands back to parallel with the feet. Draw the elbows together, lengthen away again, draw the legs up into the pelvis and breathe out, lengthen and fold through the legs. Pushing the floor away is allowed. You're creating that gentle sort of tension uh, in the physics of the pose. Pushing the floor away, lengthening, keeping the spine long, whether you're low or whether you're high. So it doesn't matter really where you're getting to, this is still to pose with soft knees stretching away. I've seen people do it with chairs out in front or sometimes the sofa is quite handy doing it in front of the sofa if that's the right height for you. Just stretching your arms away onto that so it doesn't have to be to the floor. If you're halfway down or all the way down, how to exit? Soften the knees off, drop the tail down towards the floor, keep lengthening and pushing the floor away as you draw the energy into the banders and hinge yourself back up. Carefully does it then, there's the shoulder version now, so this uh, is skipping straight to Prasarita Padottanasana C, so carefully does it. You can uh, do lots of variations here, you can have a strap or a scarf and have your arms nice and wide or you can just hold them out behind you. So we're trying to draw the shoulder blades together in this pose regardless really of where the arms are. So keep breathing, draw the energy up the legs into the banders again, take a deep breath in, stretch through the top of the head, tuck the chin in, bring the arms forward, cave the chest and draw the shoulders forward and then reverse, open up the pectoral muscles, pop the heart through to the front and open up the arms behind. A closed clasp or a, a I'm sorry, a closed clasp or an open clasp is fine. If you can want to roll each shoulder open, you can. Lengthen the front of the body, slight back bend here, draw the clasp down, draw the arms down, shoulder blades together, breathe out, soften the knees, hinge, and stretch through. Tuck the chin in as you go, and carefully find where you can be comfortable. You do not have to be going all the way down to the floor, nor do we expect necessarily for our arms to go all the way over. Listen to what's going on in the shoulder girdle. It's a complicated joint, this one. Several things going on in there. Lots of complicated ligaments and muscles. So just take care of it. You don't want anything to go, uh, <laughs> go twang. So working carefully. Take a deep breath in. As you're all the way over, it's going to be quite a long way back up. So soften the knees off, bend the knees, follow the clasp back up as you push the feet into the floor and draw the energy up the legs into the banders. Release the arms off, shake them out if you need to. Sometimes the wrists give you some feedback or up the radial muscles from the wrist into the forearms. So stretch and shake those out if you need to. Carefully then, I'm going to turn the left foot towards the front of the mat and we're going to draw the energy up into the right leg as we bring ourselves through to the front of the mat. 
lovely. Quick time check, so it's 35 minutes in. Carefully does it then. I'm going to take our soft forward fold again. So this time I'm going to step back a little bit and we're going to either have the feet slightly wider, so they might be hip distance or a little bit wider, or we might start to narrow the feet. So it's up to you really, depending on how uh, accomplished you are in this pose, how uh, stretchy your hamstrings are. Most of us don't have stretchy hamstrings, so work carefully. So you find where you think you're going to be comfortable, checking in with the knees and the feet, push the feet into the floor, take a deep breath in, stretch up. Again, lower back issues, bend the knees and bring the arms lower if you prefer. And you can breathe out, hinge through the pelvis, push the floor away and take that energy into the banders as you hinge through, lengthening the back and really long spine. You can stay here if this is enough and rest the hands on the knees or the shins and stretch away so you become a little bit like a set square. Or if you're going all the way down, you can fold all the way down. If you prefer here to take your um, Ashtanga primary series variations, you can take your Padangasthasana, binding around the toe, stretching away, drawing the shoulders and breathing out, folding. Or you can go into your Padahastasana once you've taken your Padangasthasana. So, a normal forward fold. This is still a forward fold. Stretching away and lengthening, protecting the lower back, and maybe if you need to keep your head and your heart aligned for various reasons, that is still a nice forward fold. Stretching away, lengthening the spine, and equally lengthening the front and the back of the body. So sometimes we think of back bends and front folds as only doing one thing, but we're working carefully to stretch both the front and the back equally and drawing the banders in to support. Taking your breaths here, when you're ready then, you can soften off, carefully does it, and bring yourself back up. So softening the knees off just releases the lower back, push the floor away so you can activate some of the leg muscles as well as the banders and bring yourself back up carefully. Lovely. So carefully does it then. We haven't yet done a, a standing balance. So lots of variations. If you know a standing balance that you're really happy to do, tree pose, um, Adahasta Padangustasana, the toe catch, then that's up to you. Um, we will talk through um, a simple standing balance for those who have not done lots of yoga. So find your standing balance. Obviously balancing quite a few challenges so not least that we've got to have some strength in this area here to support me uh, really make ourselves tall use the physics of the pose use gravity push the floor away use your eyes to stare at something that's not going to move to allow you to fix sometimes pushing through the big toe helps of the base foot sometimes if you need to arms out airplane the arms being nice and long banders working is the foundation of the poses so bringing yourself into a, a leg lift of some description tree pose if you prefer you can push the floor away stretch up and out of this left hip it's almost like a hip hike where you're just stretching up and out and this leg is really quite strong now pushing for um, against the floor up up and away and then carefully draw the energy into right leg as you suck the banders in and draw the knee up this is still a standing balance, keeping breathing here. You can take it up a bit if you want to. You can catch the knee with the hand, keep nicely balanced, lifting through the top of the head, popping open the heart lightly and being nice and tall and stacked over the pelvis. Changing this position if you prefer, you can slide the arm down towards the ankle or catching the toe and drawing the heel in towards the bottom and then still being tall, lengthening up holding here and into the Ardha Hasta if you prefer where you're stretching the leg away. Your call, you can find where you're happiest. This, still a standing balance, flexing or pointing the foot, your call. Still drawing the energy into these important muscles which control the leg lift and provide strength front and back. Keep breathing here. Sometimes these poses, particularly if you start to use Ujjayi breath, closing the throat, soft palate to create that sibilant sound, you can really tune in to the pose. And instead of listening to me rattle on, you can just zen out if you prefer. When you're ready, we're gonna take it on the other side. So it's your call. If you wanna take a bit longer in your standing balance, carry on, or you can swap over. You can push down through the right leg when you're ready 
lengthening up, using the banders, creating that space and strength in the pose, lifting the right leg up, drawing the energy up the leg into the belly, banders working, lifting the leg, holding it here, or catching the knee, or the ankle, or the toe, lifting and pushing away, lengthening, lift the heart, stretch up through the top of the head, really pushing the floor away now. Find where you can hold or take it out into that extended position if you prefer. You can choose, okay? You don't have to stand for ages in these poses. Some of them can be energy sapping rather than energy giving. And at the moment, maybe we need to think about giving ourselves energy rather than taking energy away. So it's up to you. In order for our immune systems to work to their best capacity, we need to have um, energy and have be, be well rested and well hydrated. So just something to think about in your practice if you're practicing at home. So when you're ready, you can bring yourself out of your standing balance, bring yourself back into Samastiti, draw the hands together into Namaste, draw the shoulders down the back. Again, no hurry if you're enjoying your standing balances. Tucking the chin in, lengthening through the top of the head. Band is still working here and careful not to lock out the knees. We're rather pushing the floor away and lengthening up out of the pelvis. Focusing here. Just taking an assessment of where you feel you're at tonight. What feedback are you getting from your body, joints, muscles, sinews, even maybe on a cellular level? And then when you're ready to, we're going to move ourselves down to seated. So options here, you can obviously just, just have a nice sit down. So you carefully does it with knees, lower backs, etc. It might be that you have to take more of a curtsy, carefully lower yourself down, or use a chair or a sofa that's next to you to carefully lower yourself down. If you prefer, you can take the half vinyasa. So if you're more used to doing the vinyasa classes or vinyasa or ashtanga styles, you can take a deep breath in and stretch up and move yourself through the vinyasa and bring yourself down to seated. So that's your call. Carefully does it then. We'll eventually find ourselves, all of us, meeting on the mat in a seated position. So then, carefully does it. We're going to sit ourselves um, and make sure that we are sat comfortably with our legs out in front, stretching away drawing the energy up the legs, sitting up nice and tall, and just finding your dandasana. So we're not really aiming to push the backs of the knees into the floor here. We are carefully just trying to draw the energy up the legs, into the belly, into the bandas, and use that energy to sit up and out of the pelvis. Hands can rest on the thighs. Um, the full version then would be drawing the hands next to the pelvis, drawing the shoulder blades down and together and away, popping open the heart and tucking the chin in. And it might be so much activity through the legs is drawing the heels off the floor. Keep breathing here. Lovely. Relaxing it off. Carefully does it. We'll leave out Paschimottanasana, the forward fold, tonight. So we're carefully going to bring ourselves up into the reverse. So we're going to either options here, legs bent, feet in parallel, legs bent, roughly right angle, or maybe a little bit closer, depending on your proportions. It probably depends how long your legs are. We're going to bring the fingers behind and the hands are probably a good sort of foot or 20, 25 centimeters behind the bottom with the hands out to the side. So when you look down, you can definitely see um, definitely three fingers at least, more under the shoulder heads. So we're gonna draw the shoulders back and together, pop the heart up to the ceiling, lengthen through the top of the head, push the floor away as you draw the energy into the banders. And then we're gonna push up and see if we can bring the pelvis off the floor. You can keep going, keep going, keep opening up the um, front of the shoulders, drawing the shoulder blades together. Careful not to lock out the elbows here either. Even weight through the feet. And the final option is potentially to lower the head carefully back to the little cushion of the trapezius that's waiting for you. 
up to you. Some people don't like this because it feels quite vulnerable through the front of the neck. Draw the energy up the legs. So you're lengthening through the thighs, but drawing the energy back into the banders, back into the belly. Breathing here. If you know the optional leg lift here, then you can take it if you want to. Draw the energy into the left leg, draw the energy then into the right leg and stretch up nice and tall. Carefully does it, hold as long as you want to until you feel that maybe the pose is fighting and not feeling. Carefully does it. When you bring yourself out, we're gonna lift that head up and look. Don't forget to take your leg lift on the other side if you have been doing that. And then carefully push the heels of the hands into the floor as you bend the elbows and curl the pelvis carefully down to the floor. Option here to just release that off, hug the knees into the chest, sit up as you clasp your own knees, draw the shoulders down the back and stretch up. You can flex the feet here as well if you want to, suck the banders in and then breathe out, release off. There is the option here to take that again. So you can take the bent leg version again. This time, if you want a variation, if you're doing bent legs again, you can spin the hands the other way and have the fingers facing out. Slightly different action in the shoulder girdle. So up to you, you can see how that works for you, We're still keeping the elbows soft. Or there is also the option to take the straight leg version. Hand position is your choice on this one. So you can roll the shoulders open, bring the shoulder blades together, stretch away and lengthen, deep breath in, and then breathe out using the banders, using the energy in the front of the body, lift up and lengthen away. Keep breathing here. Sometimes you might need to flex them, the toes just to avoid cramp setting in. Breathing here, lengthening, and again, head up, head down, carefully working. If you've got the head back, Bring that head up first to strengthen the front of the neck and then carefully lower the bottom down to the floor, whether you were straight leg or bent leg. If you need to shake out the arms, shake out the wrists, wrists even, then do. Lovely. Shaking it out, fantastic. So carefully does it then, we're gonna bring ourselves into our Badokonasana. So this is drawing the soles of the feet together. I can turn towards you potentially, which might be a better view. So you're gonna bring the feet together, the heel together, the toes together. If you want to, you can peel the feet open like a book, which might have the action of lowering the knees to the floor, might not. The aim then of this pose is not necessarily how close the heels get to the bottom. It is about sitting up nice and tall and lowering the knees down to the floor. So potentially feeling that you're lengthening from the pelvis to the knees and stretching away, but not forcing. This is about, you know, finding the yoga in the pose, sitting up nice and tall, tucking the chin in, drawing the energy down the back and meeting the banders where they're coming up and settle here. Relaxing through the hips if you prefer and just let gravity um, have its action on your hip flexors and hips and thighs. Keep breathing. Banders tucking in here. So two variations of the forward fold here. You can take both or one of these which you prefer. So elbows in or out, I don't really mind whether they tuck in or whether they flap out. Your call, draw the energy up, lengthen and lengthening up and out of the pelvis as you stretch away and fold over. Gentle guiding is allowed, but grabbing the feet and then drawing yourself down is probably not. So we want the action to come mainly from the muscles, the deep muscles in the belly that pull you over, stretching away. That's option one. Option two is to take the bent backed version where we open up and extend the spine. So maybe drawing the elbows in, draw the shoulders down the back, tuck the chin in, drop the chin, drop the chest and curl yourself down. Again, elbows in or elbows out as long as you're opening up the back and unfortunately you get to sniff your own feet here. So relaxing into the pose, settling, trying not to fight it, just feeling it and breathing here. And 
when you're ready and you've taken five to ten breaths in this pose if you've been in the straight back version you may have been resting in that a little bit longer lengthen through the top of the head suck the banders in draw the energy back down the back towards the pelvis and bring yourself back out carefully bring those knees back together you might want to place your hands underneath your knees and bring them up and you can again wrap your arms around your knees push back to settle on that slightly flatter bit of the, the bottom and stretch up through the top of the head and release the lower back so settling ourselves down now uh, to um, the floor. So we're gonna bring ourselves down towards the floor. If you want to, you can roll onto your right hand side and arrange yourself down onto your um, back with your legs bent or carefully does it holding behind the legs or stretching the arms out and carefully curling yourself down to the floor with control and style. Carefully does it settling here so just checking in with the lower back and the hips so you can do this one at a time or both legs together hugging the knee to the chest or stretching the leg away if you want an increased stretch and just guiding the knee roughly nicely in line with the hip um, hip bone there the iliac crest so just breathing here a breathe out you can hug it in a little bit breathe in release it off breathe out hug it in a little bit leg bent or leg straight on the other side and release it off. Swap the legs over so you can place the other leg with the foot flat to start with, just assess how things are on the other side and breathing in, drawing in. If you feel good and you want to stretch away, then stretch the other leg away, guiding that leg nicely straightened in, breathing out, hugging in, breathing in, releasing slightly, breathing out, hugging in. Keep the bandit engaged here to help support and breathing out, uh, sorry, breathing in, relaxing. Then you can bring both knees in together. So you can place that foot on the floor, bring the other foot in together, guide one in at a time, or lift both in together, hands to knees. Draw the shoulders down the back and tuck the chin in, lengthen through the top of the head as you suck those knees in and start to lengthen through the sacrum, so the lower back. And you might feel that the coccyx and the parts of the lower back start to lift off the floor and lengthen away as you start to tilt up. Breathing here, Apanasana, releasing the lower back, releasing a few other things potentially as well <laughs> at the same time. Then carefully does it, we're gonna rest ourselves down. So we're gonna place the feet flat on the floor, stretch the arms wide. And my preferred version of this is actually with the palms down to the floor. So stretch those away, roughly in line with the shoulder girdle or slightly lower if that's causing tension in the shoulders and the neck. And lower yourself down again, stretching through the top of the head and tucking the chin in. Carefully does it then, loads of variations here. So if you've got a preferred uh, back uh, twist and that spinal release pose that you want to do, feel free to introduce it now. Or we're gonna bring that left leg over the right leg, carefully push down through the left hand, stretch the left shoulder away as you roll down onto this side. The mic pack makes it a bit tricky for me, so carefully does it. You can work carefully here. You can also place that top foot on the floor if you don't want to go very far and then just breathe into it here and carefully draw yourself back to center. Swap the legs over, uh, all in the best possible taste. I'm gonna carefully lower down to the other side, reaching away with the right arm this time, trying to keep that right shoulder near the floor and stretching away. Carefully lowering down, you don't have to go to the floor if you don't want to, this is quite a strong twist. So work carefully, listening to what's going on in the back. If you turned your head away, bring the head back to centre. Carefully does it, bring the leg back up to centre. Use those banders to support. These are heavy bones here. Release the legs and repeat the apanasana. So hugging knees to chest and stretching up through the top of the head and lifting the sacrum, lower uh, spine, coccyx off the floor. So option here, if you need to just take a quick 
uh, bridge pose if you're familiar with it. So you can take um, making sure you're nicely stacked through the shoulders, lifting the head and stretching away, keeping the head super straight for these poses. Push the feet into the floor, lengthening through the thighs, drawing the pelvis towards the knees, legs parallel, heart pops up, shoulders open and the chest widens, collarbones lengthen. Keep the um, engagement through all four corners of the feet and the hands. There's not too much pressure through the back of the head. Most of the push down is through the shoulder girdle and down the arms and then the feet. Keep breathing here. And then carefully, you can curl the pelvis. So tip the tail forwards as you lengthen the spine. Relay one vertebra at a time and folding down. Again, if you need to release off at all, bring the knees into the chest, either one at a time or both together and release off. So option here, before you take a Shavasana, because we've got a very brief Shavasana at the end here, up to you to take a Yoga Mudrasana if you prefer. So you can find a comfortable cross-legged position. So a comfortable, easy pose, Sukhasana, or bringing yourself into a nice Padmasana, so um, a half lotus or indeed a full lotus. Listen to your knees and hips though, and make sure you're warm enough for this pose. Sitting up nice and tall, sweeping the arms round. Again, a forward fold here. Clasp the hands behind the back or rest the hands behind. As long as the shoulders are moving open, the collarbones are widening and the heart pops through. That's fine. Tuck the chin in and breathe out, fold over. Band is lightly engaged here as you draw up and away with the arms. Tuck the chin in and take your five focus breaths here. So drawing the energy into the body and circulating the um, benefits of the practice around the body. Taking your five breaths. And then when you're ready, bring yourself back out, following the clasp back, following the hands back, releasing the legs and carefully again, going down to the floor, either through your right hand side and carefully lowering down to the floor or lowering down to your Shavasana. So Shavasana, the hardest pose of all, uh, particularly at the moment where we're so bombarded with messages all day, every day, things we need to think about, things we need to worry about. This time is for you. This time is to let go of everything. It is a conscious relaxation, so it's not yogic sleep. Um, and if it's more comfortable for you, you can relax into your Shavasana, uh, literally the death of the practice, the end of the practice with your feet flat on the floor and your legs bent, stretching through the top of the head and just tucking the chin in lightly. If you prefer, the more traditional version is having limbs apart from each other, so no part of the body really is touching any other part, opening up the legs wider, opening up the arms, rolling the palms open, covering yourself with a blanket if you need to, and that might just be the midriff if you're in a nice warm house, and settling. So banders now release, all tension is released, all effort is ended, and we're just settling ourselves. If we need to make final adjustments, we can lift ourselves slightly off the floor, lift each leg, lift each arm, and just make sure we are surrendering to gravity. This is a conscious decision. Tuning into how your body is feeling Breathing any areas of tension away, settling. Feel the weight of your own body. Feel it surrendering to the earth. Every limb going heavy. And notice the shape and space that you're taking up on the floor. the body starts to settle, you can bring your attention into the breath. Note as you start to breathe and focusing the breath, you can feel the belly lift, breathing into the belly, imagining maybe your hands in that position, you're lifting your hands, drawing the breath up the body 
to the top of the lungs. And then lowering the belly and just gently letting the breath go. Focusing on a nice quality long out breath. Following these breaths then, lifting the part of the body, drawing the breath in, finding your own breath pattern and following each breath in and out to its full length. We notice ourselves here becoming maybe distracted. Part of being mindful is the noticing that we have become distracted. So tuning into when our mind wanders, grabbing onto the string of the kite and drawing it back in. Focusing back onto the breath and the body. If you're able and it's safe to do so, you can move the attention of the breathing to the nostrils. Feeling the cool breath coming in through the nose. And then the warm breath leaving the body. And following these breaths from start to finish. Staying with your breath. Asking yourself, what is happening right now? bringing your awareness back to the sounds you can hear in the room. How your skin feels against the air and your body against the floor. And very gently moving your fingers and your toes to bring a bit of life back into your limbs. If it feels comfortable tonight, you can take a deep breath in and bring your hands up over the top of your head and stretch up and away along the floor. And then equally, if it's comfortable tonight, you can draw your knees back into your chest, either one at a time or both together. Hug your knees in to release your back from lying on the floor. And then very gently, as we reach past the top of the hour, and draw those knees in, maybe roll over to the right hand side and release the back from lying on the floor a little bit further in the fetal position and then bringing ourselves back up to a comfortable seated position. So thank you very much everyone.
bringing your hands to namaste in the traditional way in class or just bringing your hands to your chest and then just noticing the effects of the practice um, thank you for joining in namaste and uh, either see you tomorrow at 12 or i'll try again monday night as well and see if i can improve the lighting your feedback's welcome so do pop me some comments after and hopefully this will record so some of you who couldn't join live will be able to watch it back later hopefully a more adventurous class tomorrow kept it quite standard tonight uh, thank you very much good night <laughs>